you do if your leg was amputated? Tough question. For Dick Trom, the answer was easy. Start running. He began running by himself. Always a high achiever, he decided to run the New York City Marathon, becoming the first known amputee to achieve such a feat. He completed all 26.2 miles in 7 hours and 24 minutes. As he was running, it occurred to him that if running meant this much to him, it might have the same effect on other handicapped people. But this raised a difficult question. How could he find other handicapped athletes? To solve this, he put an advertisement in the newspaper, saying to meet Tuesday night in Central Park. He wasn't even sure if anyone would even show up. To his great surprise, people started to show up. But what he didn't anticipate was that the people who showed up weren't just amputees. They were blind runners, cancer survivors, and wheelchair athletes. Seeing his club grow with such a wide range of handicapped athletes, Dick started to recruit able-bodied volunteers. Over the course of a couple years, this would turn to Achilles International, where disabled people ran as volunteers. Last year, while in New York City, I had the privilege to be one of these Achilles volunteers, acting as a guide to a blind athlete named Akan. I guided him around Central Park with a tether as we ran three miles. While on the surface it would appear to others that I was helping Akan, I can assure you that it was the other way around. I had the time of my life that night, and it showed me how di disabled people learn to cope with their disabilities and do amazing things. My second role model that I'd like to talk about was inspired by Dick Trom. Terry Fox was a standout Canadian high school athlete. He reached an important crossroads the night before he had his leg amputated due to an aggressive cancer called osteosarcoma. While he should have met at the lowest point of his life, he was excited and inspired by an article about Dick Trom. It was at this moment that he decided to run what he called the Marathon of Hope to support cancer research. Following his surgery, he rehabbed in preparation for this monumental run with a 14-month training period. The Marathon of Hope was no ordinary marathon. In a tremendous athletic accomplishment, he ran 26 miles each day for 143 days straight. He embarked on this run because he learned that the cutting-edge treatments that he received were brought about because of scientific advances. He wanted to help future patients get the same care that he did by fundraising for cancer research. Since Terry started his run, over 750 million Canadian dollars have been raised for cancer research. The survivor rate for osteosarcoma has now increased to 80%. Terry Fox became a hero of mine because of how he responded to life-altering misfortune. How you respond to challenges like getting your leg amputated defines your character. While I can't imagine someone telling me that they were going to amputate my leg, an even more insurmountable challenge would be getting diagnosed with ALS. This is exactly what happened to St. John's Prep graduate Pete Frades at the age of 27. Most doctors agree that the, one of the worst diagnoses one can receive is ALS. ALS, also known as Lou Gehrig's disease, is a neurodegenerative disease that causes progressive loss of motor neurons. Patients die as a result of paralysis and the inability to speak, breathe, and eat. The night Pete Frades learned that he was diagnosed with ALS, he told his family that, I now know why I'm here, and he expressed his determination to fight this disease. While he recognized that his efforts would not help him, he was determined to raise awareness and funding for this terrible disease. He told his parents that he wanted the world's premier philanthropists like Bill Gates, to hear about this illness, to galvanize efforts to support research that would lead to better treatments for future patients with this disease. Pete Frades was a determined man. Two years after his diagnosis, he launched the Ice Bucket Challenge, a fundraising effort like nothing the world had ever seen before. People filmed themselves dumping buckets of ice-cold water on their heads, donating money to the ALS Foundation, and then challenging their friends to do the same. Leveraging the power of social media, the challenge quickly grew viral and amassed over 2.4 million participants, including Bill Gates. That raised a grand total of $250 million for ALS research in just one year. The fourth story I'm going to talk about has to do with COVID-19, which has been a challenge for all of us. The Mount Cowrie Food Bank in Acton, Massachusetts, has a long tradition of success, serving over 34,000 different meals to date. Each week, 
a team of dedicated volunteers prepare a sit-down meal in a church cafeteria for about 150 people. When COVID-19 hit, they realized that they could no longer host 150 people in the cafeteria due to COVID concerns. Their founder, Mike Tobia, had every excuse in the world, including the fact that he was battling metastatic pancreatic cancer to pause their operations. However, in the same way that Peter Frades, Terry Fox, and Dick Traum had adversity, Mike Tobia decided to face these challenges head on and continue his mission to serve the hungry. To do this, they adapted to the COVID-19 crisis and changed their model by starting to serve outdoor drive-by meals at the same location once a week. This has been such a big success that the number of meals that they were able to feed has gone up to 200 per week. Mount Cary Food Bank is a very good example of people having compassion for others and being very dedicated and resilient to the times. They are able to raise funds and obtain food and help out the less fortunate. The founder of the organization did this all through a battle with cancer. What's amazing to me is that, they, is that the one theme that unites Mike Tobia, Pete Frades, Terry Fox, and Dick Trom is that they all had enormous challenges ranging from cancer to leg amputation to ALS. Despite these challenges, each of them were able to make an extraordinary contribution to help other people. While each of us has to find an area that we are passionate about, I hope that all of us can find inspiration from these four extraordinary individuals to find a way of serving others. To quote Pete Frades, being part of something bigger than yourself is one of the best things that you can do. Thank you.